here I am again on Bass Strait. 448 kilometres of relaxed travel before I meet up with Angie and the crew. They've taken a different route, so I have this time to myself. Just enough to adjust and get into the right pace for one of my favourite places, Tasmania. Well, Ange, back again, season eight, what's up down under, and we are kicking off with a big one. We sure are. We're here at Devonport, Tasmania. Then we're gonna make our way down to Petter Wilderness Lodge in the southwest of Tassie in the National Park. Cradle Coast Tourism have jumped on board to show us why Devonport is not just the gateway to Tasmania, but a destination all of its own. Now, we don't wanna to work too hard, so we've got Daniel Salberg back in Melbourne, who's gonna show us how to make caravanning easy and safe. Of course, none of this would be possible without the help of our good mates at the Caravan Industry Association, Victoria. So stick around as we show you what's, what's up, up down, down under. under. It's time to see this land, this land of wonder. It's time to go and see what's up down under. What's up down under. This episode we're in Devonport, Tasmania and our first stop was Islander Campers to pick up a couple of RVs. Now the Victorian Association actually have members in Tassie, they look after both states, so we just contact the guys there and they hook us up with one of their members down here, Island Campers, and next thing, voila, we've got two RVs. Doing business with association members gives you peace of mind. They operate under a specific code of ethics to ensure a positive customer experience. You can find a list of association members by logging on to gomakesomememories.com.au. We picked up the two RVs from Island Campers in Penguin and we're heading towards Devonport and I thought it's a good time just to go over a couple of things you need to know if you're going to be towing RVs that are very important. Here's Daniel from the association, he'll let you know. Thanks for that, Naka. Obviously, we want to ensure that you're safe on your journeys when you're travelling around this country. Now, one of the key elements to that is connecting your car to your caravan. Now, connecting them up through your safety chains is your D-shackle. Now, there's a big industry myth that we want to clarify for you today. So, the industry myth around D-shackles is that they're rated to an Australian standard. So, that Australian standard is actually for lifting purposes and not for pulling purposes. So, when you're selecting a D-shackle for your caravan, there's some guidance around from some of the state regulatory authorities which state that they need to be fit for purpose. Now, this is a key element to ensure it's not a regulation, it's a guidance. So, the Department of Transport and Main Roads from Queensland have created a guidance table which give you the appropriate ratings that can match up to your vehicle. So hopefully that clears up the myth around D-shackles. Now for some more information about this you can head to our website gomakesomememories.com.au. Now I'll pass back to Macca and Angie who are settling into Davenport. Daniel has provided us with heaps of helpful tips and one of them was staying at the Discovery Holiday Park here in Devonport. I pulled into the holiday park in Devonport, had a quick look at the view, but I thought I'd better rip down to the office, catch up with Pat and find out the guff about the town. The Devonport Discovery Holiday Park was fantastic. It was so easy. Pulled in with the slide on to an ensuite site and uh, just relaxed really because it's such a beautiful park set right on the water. If you get up early enough, you can watch the spirit of Tassie come in. I did it once. <laughs> Pat, this is a beautiful park you've got here, set right on the ocean. You can watch the uh, ferry come in early in the morning, can't you? Yes, Nada no, comes in very early, about six o'clock every day. It really is the ideal spot to come and stay. How far away are you from the terminal? We're about five minutes drive. Too easy. So very easy. The park has plenty of large powered sites. Macca was able to back in the island camper caravan and there's also heaps of drive through sites if reversing isn't your thing. Even though I had a shower on board, I pulled the slide on up to the ensuite, which gave me a shower and toilet away from my sleeping quarters. If you're not traveling in an RV, you can choose from several cabin options. The views here are spectacular. Facilities, you've got your barbecue area. We've got a couple of barbecue areas. We've got a couple of circles that have got barbecue areas for themselves. We've got the camp kitchen. And of course, the jumping pillow for the big kids out there. <laughs> yes, we've got the jumping pillow. A lot of people get on there for exercise in the morning and of a night time. 
Now, I guess people see Devonport a little bit as the gateway to seeing Tassie, but what we're discovering is there's actually so much to do once you're here. Can you give us a bit of a clue where, where we should head? Spray and Fresh is Sprayton excellent. Spray and, okay. and Fresh is excellent. They've got all the local produce, um, juices, food, everything. It's a great, great spot to that go might be to. my first stop today, I think. I'd say it should be. Thank you. No worries at all. <laughs> See you on the jumping pillar. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> It was the first time we've had a really good look around Devonport, not just driven through on our way to somewhere else. And there is so much on offer there. The guys at Cradle Coast Tourism really helped us out. They've got a, a tasting trail, and one of the first places we went to was a place called Sprayton and Fresh, which uh, they have all local produce to make things like cider, juices, wines, and even ginger beer. So we had to have a little tasting in there. We were just getting started on the tasting trail, and what a start it was. Well, Maka, it sure has been delightful sampling some of the flora here at Sprayt and Fresh. Absolutely, but you guys stick around because straight after the break, we're going to check out some of the local fauna at Wings Wildlife Park. What's up down under? So we've taken a little drive out of Devonport down to Guns Plains to check out the Wings Wildlife Park. Now you can come and stay or you can come for the day, but I reckon we should just go and have a play. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Wings Wildlife Park was just somewhere that you have to go to. It's a, probably about a 40 minute drive from Devonport, but so worth it. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. The scenery is spectacular. And it's, it's like that movie, We Bought a Zoo. It feels like you're in someone's house and they've got a zoo in the backyard. Gina Campwell is part of the Wings family and manages the park. She took me through the inside displays and explained how most folks spend their day here. We have a few presentation shows that are included in their general entry. Um, then they can come in and out as much as they like until four. So they'll come in, have a look around, come out, have a coffee, something to eat, and then head back through. So what sort of things do the, the visitors seem to really love? Okay, so originally we would have thought it was hand feeding the large forester kangaroos, but I must say the fish are definitely number one. Can we have a go? Throw some of that in. Do I get to feed them? You can feed them. How good is that? All at once? All at once. Oh. Nice and close, look in so you don't miss anything. I feel as though I'm being set up for something here. So we've got a mix through our pond. Hey, pond there here. you go. <laughs> Where's your manners? <laughs> so you can understand why the kids love it. We got to see the Tassie Devils being fed and wow, they were being fed this wallaby leg and they were ferocious. Look like the kitchen table of my place when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me a baby wombat to hold. Now that's something you can't do every day of the week. An orphaned common wombat. Oh, there's How nothing common about you. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, it's in your arms, soft fur, it's something that well, like I said, you don't get to do it every day of the week. Along with the exotic species like the American bison and the ever-curious meerkats, the park hosts a variety of reptiles. So this is a little jungle python. Ooh. So he's only a young'un. He looks kind of cute for a snake. All up, it was a top day and one you don't want to miss when you're in Devonport. Jenna, thanks for having us, been great. If people want to find out any more information, have you got a website or something? Yeah, we sure do, Macca. So look for Wings Wildlife Park on the internet or find us on Facebook and we'll keep you updated to what's happening here. Spot on. Now, if you want to get out and enjoy places like this, it's always going to get that little bit better in a JB caravan like this one. JB Caravans has been innovating on-road and off-road caravan design for years. And now they bring you the Dreamline Platinum, a premium touring caravan that looks amazing on road and set up just about anywhere you want to be. Everything has been detailed and cut to perfection. Awning overhead for shade on hot days like these and pull out steps for easy access to its luxurious interior. The Dreamline Platinum feels just like home. Take a look around and you'll find a European Dometic kitchen, a mini grill and a range hood. I love the layout of the large lounge area and so will your entire family. The ensuite has an efficient design complete with a full-size shower that comes with a frosted glass door for privacy. Now every family needs a lot of storage and the Dreamline Platinum comes with plenty of that and all in the right places. 
with appliances you'd expect. A microwave, Dometic fridge and freezer, and the LCD TV that's mounted on a convenient swing arm so you can view your favourite programs from the lounge or whilst relaxing in your queen size bed. The Dreamline Platinum is fitted with raised Elco rock and roll suspension with four shock absorbers. Perfect for touring with a little bit extra so you can visit most national parks. JB Caravan's off-road and on-road expertise packed into the Dreamline Platinum. For more information on this caravan or any other caravan in the JB Caravan's range, log on to jbcaravans.com.au. A constant challenge when you're on the road is to keep all the gear in your vehicle in its place. Now, Ramir here has got that sorted with the Adventurer Draw System from 4B Fitouts. Ramir, this is impressive, mate. What can you tell me about it? We went to market 4B Fitouts. He helped us design this layout for our vehicle. This is the drawer that we've got from 4B Fitouts. It's a nice, big, deep drawer. Can fit all of our cutlery, crockery, our breakfast stuff. And then on this side here, we've got um, more storage, a much bigger storage area, which we had full of a lot of our groceries and stuff like that. And then one of the most important things when you're camping is a good fridge. Everything in its place. What's this up here, mate? Ah, this is a very important, this is our soft luggage rack. This is where we store all our bedding. We have our sheets and our, our blankets and everything. We had a lot of storage area in there. You have made use of every possible piece of space in here. Yep. And if you guys want to make use of every possible space you've got, check out fullbyfitouts.com.au and find what suits you. Hey, stick around because after the break... I get my way and head to Amber's House of Chocolate. <laughs> and I get my way and we go to a brewery. <laughs> and we head back to Melbourne to see Daniel Salberg for some great caravanning tips. What's up down under? G'day, Macca here. Just wanted to let you know that this episode was made possible by our partners at the Caravan Industry Association Victoria, helping you go make some memories. Okay, Maka, here's the deal. I'll let you pick an attraction if I can pick an attraction. We're going to a brewery! <laughs> of course we are. <laughs> I'm taking you to a chocolate factory. A oh, chocolate factory. It's called House of Ambers. How's your sweet tooth? Perfect. <laughs> I found out there was a chocolate factory, Amber's House of Chocolate. <laughs> so that was first on my list to see. And the building itself is so pretty as you enter. It's just got this gorgeous feel to it. And Igor, the owner, is just, he's just, you can see the passion in his eyes. He's been making chocolate for, I'm not sure how many years, but he, oh, he knows what he's talking about and he doesn't need to sell it to me, but he can make chocolate. In fact, he taught us how to make chocolate. <laughs> I got confused, I got overwhelmed. And I, didn't know what to I was pretty good at it, but Macca on the other hand, well, you know what he'd be like, a kid in a chocolate shop. Go and wash your hands and come back when you're clean. Actually, you'll never come back, will you? Finished, um, though, right? yeah. So as you were saying, you could compare chocolate to wine. Yeah, um, if you get a heavy meal at night, you want a, a dark red wine to go with it. But if you have a, a light lunch outside, you want something lighter. And chocolate's the same. There's different varieties of cocoa, uh, different recipes, but also the cocoa grown in different regions gives you different flavours. And Eagle creates these different flavours by importing the best ingredients from around the world. I could see his passion for chocolate in the museum area of the factory where he took me next. But of course, Macca was lagging behind. Catch up with of course, it is a chocolate factory where they produce a variety of confectionery delights with a retail section to purchase your favourites. Igor, oh, this is amazing. Thanks for having us, mate. Have you got a website or something? Yeah, just Google Anvers and chocolate and you'll find us. I'm going to get into this lot. I reckon Angie's probably off already burning the energy. Sounds good to me. Well, if you've overindulged a little like me, head on over to Pedal Buggies Tasmania and hook yourself up with one of these rigs. Now they've got rigs for all shapes and sizes and ages, and they'll set you off on this scenic course around Tassie. Now that's my little health tip. If you want a great caravanning tip, it's over to Daniel Selberg back in Melbourne. Thanks, Angie. Now my tip is to ensure that you're in safe during your travels by ensuring that you know your dimensional limitations, especially when you fit aftermarket accessories. 
There's two key aspects to your dimensional requirements. Now, the first one is the width of your caravan. Now, things like your awning play a part in your width, but your lighting does not. Now, the maximum width you can have is two and a half meters. So the second key aspect of dimensional requirements is the length of your caravan. Now the length of your caravan and the towability play a key part in this aspect. Now the rear overhang can be no longer than 3.7 metres, but also it has to be shorter than the front load space. Now this front load space goes to the very front of your caravan that can be loaded up, like your toolboxes or your gas bottles. Now I hope everyone now understands the importance of dimensional requirements for your caravan. Now for this tip or any other tip, head to our website at gomakesandmemories.com.au. Now back to Macca and Angie down in Tasmania. Out and about exploring for little gems in the Cradle Coast region and I reckon we may have just stumbled across a little cracker. Now Macca, this place has your name written all over it. Well, actually, it doesn't. It's called The Seven Sheds and I think we need to get in there ASAP to have a little taste. Couldn't agree with you more. The beer at Seven Sheds, magnificent. Willie's just making this stuff up in his shed originally, and it's got bigger and bigger. He's built more and more sheds, and all of a sudden, more beers. I really enjoyed catching up there. Hops growing in the backyard. It was just a really nice place to go and spend some time. We strolled through the blinds as Willie opened us up to the world of hops. So, I mean, these guys, the girls, I should say, they've got a, you can feel it on there, there's quite a prickly little um, thing on the vine. So, I mean, that's a pretty fully formed flower, but I know it's not. Well, it shouldn't be quite ready yet. Macca was so polite, but I could read his mind. Let's taste some beer. Seven Sheds has a sizeable cellar door where we ended up to sample the fruits of Willie's labour. Are you getting a little bit excited, oh, Macca? Oh, Angel, I tell you what, this is my kind of workbench, Willie. We're at the business end of things, mate. What's happening? We next? are. Well, I'm going to pour you a sample of one of our beers, possibly several. <laughs> What's this that is, one called? This is Paradise Pale. And this is our sort of entry level, and it's actually the last beer before Paradise. Mm. So we've got a local town called Paradise up the road. Next beer is Kentish Ale. Uh, you're standing in Kentish. And Kentish is where I remained standing until we sampled the lot. For the TV show, of course. Well, righto, Willie. Well, we found you today. So when someone else comes to visit, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you and find out all about when they can come and try these themselves? Well, we do have a website and Facebook. So what's your website? Sevensheds.com. Pretty Too straightforward. Easy. <laughs> Seven Sheds is one of many attractions on the Cradle Coast Tasting Trail. For help planning your very own tasting trail, just log on to tasmaniasnorthwest.com.au. Well, I feel as though I've had a bit of a win here today, and if you would like to have a win as well, check out our competitions, both online or like this one. Well, I know you're getting excited because I'm excited, and I'm excited because it's the Windsor Coromel 40th birthday celebration. And what a way to celebrate. Windsor and Coromel Caravans are giving you the chance to win the awesome Windsor Silhouette XC pop-up camper trailer. With awesome slide-out kitchen, two fold-out beds and off-road capability you could only dream of. But wait, there's more. The first 10 entries drawn will win a $250 Chemex gift voucher and the following 10 valid entries drawn will win a $250 voucher from Family Parks. So get excited, this could be your greatest chance to get out and explore Australia. All you need to do is log on to the What's Up Down Under competitions page and don't think twice about it. And now, because this competition is ending soon. Stick around because after the break, we begin our journey to Petter Wilderness Lodge. And visit another Cradle Coast treasure where a picture is worth a thousand words. What's up down under? The accredited RV map key opens your chances to win a brand new Volkswagen. Simply purchase any RV map accredited vehicle between now and June 23rd for your chance to win a Volkswagen Touareg valued at over $74,000. For more information on how to enter and why looking for the RV map key benefits you, just log on to letsgocaravanandcamping.com.au and follow the links. Has your caravan gone on holiday without you? The Stolen Caravan Registry website has been set up as a free service for you in the unfortunate event that your caravan or RV has been stolen. List your stolen caravan or RV today at stolencaravanregistry.com.au. You can help. Join the Stolen Caravan Registry Army on Facebook to be alerted of recently stolen caravans and RVs. Help the community today. 
Thinking about selling your caravan? Log on to Caravan Camping Classifieds. With a fixed price of only $25 per listing and thousands of visits to the site each year, you're bound to say goodbye to your old van quicker than you think. There's great tips and hints and it's a no-fuss way of selling your van and you may even find your new van on Caravan Camping Classifieds. We've enjoyed Devonport and now we're heading south to the Petta Wilderness Lodge. The Cradle Coast landscape was like travelling through a picture. And speaking of pictures, we made a stop into the town of Sheffield. It's such a pretty town and so unique. They have murals all through the town centre, like big murals. And what I found out was that they have a, a competition once a year and attract artists all around the world to enter. So they send in a small version of the mural and then they pick, I think, a couple each year to come and paint in the town centre and while all the locals can watch them paint. And it's, it's a really pretty town, well worth visiting. Well, Macca, I think we've certainly proven that Devonport is far more than the gateway to Tasmania. 100% correct, Angie. And we've got to thank our good mates at the Caravan Industry Association Victoria and Cradle Coast Tourism for making the whole thing possible. Now, next time we head deep into the southwest of Tassie for a little adventure at Petter Wilderness Lodge. So saddle up, same time, same place. Join us then as we show you What's, what's up, up Down, down under. under. What's up, Down Under?